Okay, camera's rolling. I have a freshly shaven head, and I'm ready to talk about some stuff. So, uh, wet my whistle a little bit beforehand to get started. And I think I want to talk right now about the new He-Man figures coming out. Uh, the ones that were uh, uh, the Masterverse series that uh, is going to be more focused, I think, at least in the first wave, on the the Kevin Smith animated series for Netflix, the uh, the uh, Nations series, and uh, the other series that are developing for Netflix, which I believe is just called. Uh, I'm gonna try to get that a little more centered. I believe it's just called. Uh, he-Man and the Masters of the Universe, and uh, they both seem to be taking completely different directions in which they're going to approach the, the mythos of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. Uh, that having been said, anybody who knows me at all, it's going to be fairly obvious to you that the, the one I'm going to be more interested in is going to be the Kevin Smith series, which is uh, supposed to be like a direct follow-up to the Filmation cartoon, and uh, is going to be a more, I think, traditionally grounded in the the mythos of He-Man that we already know, and uh, the, the, the one that's more aimed at kids, that one looks like it's going to be sort of more, uh, let's say aimed at kids. <laughs> like, uh, all i really seen from it was the design of, of He-Man and Battle Cat. Battle Cat looked like he was very much in the mold of uh, the 2000X design of Battle Cat, but they kind of exaggerated it and pushed the proportions of it and made it, you know, a bit more rawr, you know, sort of thing. Uh, so Battle Cat, I thought, looked okay. He-Man was, like, ridiculously <laughs> pumped up. <laughs> like, I remember, like, here recently I'd seen uh, a piece of fan art on a, a Facebook group, and it was supposed to be what Prince Adam and He-Man might look like in the Netflix She-Ra series, and, uh, basically, like, He-Man looked like, uh, Peter Pan cross-playing as He-Man or something like that, and I'd, I'd pointed out that, that this had completely missed the point of what He-Man was supposed to be, which was he was supposed to be, like, a big, powerful figure that, that boys could project their their fantasies of being big and powerful and tough and everything like that onto. And if you, if you make him look like Peter Pan in a Speedo, it's, that's no, that's not going to work, man. That's not, that's not the character. It's, you know, a completely different, I don't have anything against Peter Pan or, you know, Link or Speed Racer or other characters that are, you know, not exactly like the, the big, rough, I like, I like characters like that. I love all three of those characters I just mentioned. I like Robin and, you know, like the sort of younger characters like that. But that's not what He-Man is supposed to be. You see what I'm saying? It's, it wouldn't be a bad character in and of itself, but but to try to push that off as He-Man would, would have been bad. Now, this Netflix series, apparently they agree with me, but they took it way far in the other direction. So he's, like, ridiculously huge. We're like... I guess proportionally, like, if you imagine a guy like my head being the head that He-Man has, like, his arms are, like, maybe about that big around. Like, ridiculously gigantic. <laughs> so I'm kind of like, you know, like, like, I just kind of look at it and... Well, eh, I hope the kids like it. <laughs> I don't mean to be, I don't mean to be ragging on it. I really don't. But it's, it's just, it's not... I can tell it's not going to be what I want out of a He-Man show. And that's fine. I'm not complaining about that. Like, seriously, when I say I hope the kids like it, I really mean that. I hope the kids like it. I hope that, that they they come up, they came up with a version of He-Man that appeals to kids today, just like the original version of He-Man appealed to kids back in my day. You know, I don't mind if my version of He-Man, my old version of He-Man, becomes like the Jay Garrick version of He-Man, and this one's, like, the Barry Allen version of He-Man. You know what I mean? Like, like, if, if, if my version of He-Man becomes, like, you know, the G.I. Joe adventure team, and this version is, like, the real American hero for this generation. You see what I'm saying? It's like, things change. 
I don't have a problem with things changing. I just want them to stay good. And if that version of He-Man appeals to the kids as much as, uh, as much as the old version of He-Man appealed to my generation, I got no complaints. Especially because, you know, they're doing the, the Kevin Smith one, and that one looks like it's, it's a bit more aimed at the traditional Masters of the Universe fans. And frankly, I think kids would like that one, too. If it turns out to be one that kids... If it's even appropriate for kids to watch. I mean, Kevin Smith is writing it. <laughs> I hope it's not just like, you know, He-Man and Skeletor making a bunch of jokes about pot and sex and, you know... <laughs> Like the Jay and Silent Bob version of He-Man. <laughs> you guys have all seen Clerks and, and uh, Mallrats. You know what I'm talking about. You know exactly what I'm talking about. So, uh, but if the, the figures that I saw, which I believe to be uh, based on the Kevin Smith series, if they are, in fact, based on the Kevin Smith series, I, I think I'm going to like the character designs that they made for that show for the most part. I thought He-Man and Skeletor both looked fine, and Evil Lynn was the only one I had a problem with because it basically looked like, like, like a, a an Avatar: The Last Airbender figure that somehow accidentally got mixed in, and they put like an alternate head with Evil Lynn's helmet in there. But she's the one that looks kind of unrecognizable to me. She's wearing pants, which is strange to me because like He-Man's not wearing pants, Skeletor's not wearing pants. But we gotta cover up Evil Lynn's legs, cause God forbid we, God forbid we show a female thigh. Oh, think of the children in a show that's probably not even aimed at children. Uh, <laughs> Speaking of which, the uh, the the children aimed show uh, that was another thing that bugged me about He Man's design on that is he's got like the traditional kind of He Man cross harness armor thing, which that's good. But it's got like a weird emblem on it that it, it looks like it's supposed to be like like an an H overlaid with an M, but the M is actually looks more prominent on there to me. So it's like man he I don't know, but but yeah like uh, uh he he's wearing like this weird sort of sleeveless gray jumpsuit. It looks like, and I'm just eh, I don't know. He-Man wearing pants just always strikes me as weird. It's like he's, he's supposed to be like a barbarian dude. So just give him like the furry loincloth and the furry boots. You know, it's like that's that's what he needs to look like. You know, I, I seem to remember that uh, part of the problem with the 2000X line and how that appealed to kids was that they, they thought he looked too naked and wondered why he wasn't wearing any pants. But that was kind of part of what I liked about the... Uh, the, the the idea of blending the Masters of the Universe in with the WWE, because then when kids see you know He Man just wearing shorts, it's oh because he's kind of like a wrestler. They, they understand wrestlers. They know what wrestlers are. So you know they see John Cena wearing sh nothing but a pair of shorts. They see The Rock wearing nothing but a pair of shorts. They see Triple H wearing nothing but a pair of shorts. They see He Man wearing nothing but a pair of shorts. It all makes sense together. So, you know, I thought that was that was pretty clever. But, you know, again, hopefully the kids like it. If the kids like it, and it sells toys, and it keeps the legend of He-Man alive for another generation, I got nothing to complain about. Really. I, I'm, I'm, I, I wish nothing but success for that line. But I'm probably not going to buy it myself. I might buy the Revelations figures. I'll probably at least buy He-Man and Skeletor. And, uh... If I do buy that Evil Lynn, she's getting customized because I wasn't too crazy about it. Some people thought she looked kind of mannish, but I didn't really see that myself. You know, it just it just looked like her it, her, her costume was bland and ugly looking. It just like it, like I said, it looked like it looked like they were trying to do like a, a last Airbender kind of outfit for her, and it just it did not work. It did not work. I don't think this is my opinion. So, but, but He-Man and Skeletor both looked on point. Some people were complaining that they'd replace the Iron Cross on He-Man's chest with the, uh, the H from the battle armor He-Man. But I didn't really have a problem with that either. You know, it, it, that's the sort of thing where it's just, to, to me, if you're going to replace it with anything, that's probably the best thing to replace it with because that is like an iconic sort of emblem. And, you know, I figure part of that is probably because, you know, they don't want the character to be associated 
with certain events that would have taken place in the 1940s and certain individuals from uh, uh, a, a certain portion of Europe that would have worn said Iron Cross on their uniforms. And it's been picked up by, you know, uh, certain other groups that wish to follow in the first steps, the, the footsteps of the first group that I mentioned. And I don't even know if you guys are following my my vague sort of <laughs> line of thought that I'm taking here. But you probably do. I, I'm imagining anybody who watches my videos hopefully is, is smart enough to follow my reasoning and, and see where I'm going with that. But there's also another thing which I don't see mentioned a whole lot in that context, and that's branding. And that, that H symbol that's on the battle armor and is now on He-Man's regular cross harness on the Revelation series, you can trademark that, you can copyright that, you can put that on t-shirts. You know, that can be... Anytime somebody sees that emblem, if they recognize it, they're going to know, oh, that's He-Man. You know, people who recognize an Iron Cross might not necessarily associate it with He-Man and might associate it with things that are unpleasant. So I can see why they would think the H would be a better thing to brand their toys with than an Iron Cross. I understand it. Now, in a perfect world, yeah, sure, he could look exactly like how he looked on the original toy. But, like Batman said, it's not a perfect world, is it? Yeah, uh... <sighs> anyway, so yeah, like, like I think that's pretty much everything I have to say about that right now. So, uh, I'm happy all the toys are coming out. I'm actually planning on buying the, the Revelations figures. Uh, I'm probably still more excited about seeing more Origins stuff, and hope that that Origins line continues for quite some time, because I'll, I'll probably collect it as long as it's around. Uh, I, I guess one more thing I'll mention is, uh, of course, the previous line of toys was Masters of the Universe Classics, and I can still consider that to be like the, the high watermark of Masters of the Universe toys. That was the best line. And I figure probably the reason they're not just making more of those is I suspect that those molds are in the hands of Super 7, that they either sold or leased them to Super 7, and they have control over them right now. You'll notice that they... They even use those molds for other characters like Conan and uh, Ninja Turtles and uh, Toxic Avenger and things like that. So uh, that's what makes me think that Mattel probably doesn't even have access to those molds right now. And it was probably easier for them to start from scratch. Maybe even like the only legal way they could proceed to start from scratch and uh, do the He-Man figures that way. Anyway, that's pretty much everything I have to say about that right now, and uh, uh, we'll talk to you later. Uh, at some point, I'm going to do the next episode of, of my, my thoughts on the Star Wars saga, and that's going to be The Empire Strikes Back, so keep an eye out for that one, and uh, hopefully I'll have more action figures to open up for you soon. It's just, uh, it, it's been kind of slow going, finding stuff on the shelves right now, you know, they, they still haven't completely restocked everything from Christmas in my area. And for whatever reason, Atlanta is always really slow to get stuff. So I keep seeing all these uh, people getting the, the second and even third waves of Masters of the Universe Origins, and, and I still haven't seen any. You know, I keep seeing people putting up G.I. Joe classifieds. I still haven't seen any. You know, I just went to the... Went by a Walmart and went by a Target today and saw absolutely nothing in terms of action figures that... Either either I already had it or it just didn't tickle my fancy at all. So, well, there was, I guess there was some, some good Marvel Legends stuff, but uh, I'm mainly interested in the Spider-Man wave that they're doing right now, and I don't really want to start on that until I can find Spider-Gwen, because I want to make sure that I can find Spider-Gwen. But anyway, that's pretty much it for this episode. I'm just kind of rambling at this point, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Bye.